This episode brought to you by MeepleRealty.com, your source for high-quality custom board game inserts. Meeple Realty, think inside the box. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I'm going to bring you a card close-up of just about everything that comes, uh, every card that comes in Zephyr Winds of Change. I'm not going to show you the mission cards, just because those are that's something you can kind of explore on your own, however you want to do that when you get the game. I'm not going to show you the assignment cards either, because I think those are kind of cool to uh, experience as they come out, I haven't gone through those. I kind of I, I have them shuffled up and I draw them and and I like enjoying uh, discovering those as they come out. However, I am going to show you the upgrade cards, the warlords, the commanders, the uh, regions, all that stuff. So, without anything else, let's get right down to the game and check out the cards that come with Zephyr Winds of Change. All right, first let's start with the Bandit Gondor. Now you're going to have a starting hand size of one card. And for every two ship systems that you add into the game, you'll be able to draw an additional card. Also, the actual ship ability is Vicious Volley. Once a day, each of your attacks this phase may target separate ships. Now let's take a look at the cards that come in the deck for this ship. We've got an attack card, Savage Salvage. You have three of these in the deck. Deal one damage. If that's not evaded, mark the targeted ship with this card. When the marked ship is destroyed, discard this card and restore one of your currently damaged hull upgrades. Next, we've got Ruthless Rage. You get three of these in the deck. It's another attack card. Deal one damage. If you have no attack cards remaining in your hand, you may discard one card to draw one card. This is Ferocious Fury, it's another attack card. There's two of these in the deck, and it's simply deal one damage. And the only non-attack card in the starting deck for this ship is the Holy Hole. Reduce the total damage you receive this phase by one. This is a maneuver card, and you get two of them in the deck. Here we've got the Merchant Gypsy. Starting hand size is one card, and you add an additional card for each crew member you hire. And you can see down here you've got four crew members, as opposed to the three that you saw in the Bandit Gondor a moment ago. And the ability that uh, it comes with the ship is once a region, select bronze, silver, or gold, and draw one random system. This system costs half its original price. All right, now this ship is a little bit more tech heavy than the Bandit, a lot more tech heavy than the Bandit Gondor. You start with two explosive rounds. Place this on any attack card in play. That attack card now deals direct damage. You also have the Storeroom Rummage, which is a tech card. Take one card from your discard and place it in your hand. There's two of these in the deck. Diversion. Another tech card, there's two of these in your deck. Target a ship. Once all player actions have been taken, roll one die. If the roll is even, the targeted ship's first action, whether it's attack, maneuver, or tech, has no effect this phase. Then a maneuver card, deflate. Target one enemy ship. Evade all incoming attacks from the targeted ship during this phase. You may not play or use any maneuvers for the remaining phases of this battle. So that one comes with a little bit of a risk. And then we have an attack card, Bomb. Roll. One through two, deal zero damage. Three to four, deal one damage. And five to six, deal two damage. Next up, we have the Imperial Scimitar. Starting hand size, one card. Add an additional card for every two hull. And you can see this one actually has six slots for hull, three for structure, and three for armor. You have four crew member slots on this one. And the NH ship ability is Intimidate. Once a trip, target a basic enemy ship. If your current undamaged hull is twice theirs, remove them from the battle. All right, first up, we've got a tech card. Now you're gonna get three of these in the deck. This is Get Behind Me. Place this card on any ship. This card acts the same as one additional armor for this ship. This card takes damage, even direct damage, before the protected ship's hull. Discard this card once it takes one damage or if undamaged, discard it at the end of the battle. Here we've got Noble Inspiration. 
place, there's two of these in the deck, by the way, this is a tech card, place one of your crew's faction or personality abilities off cooldown. Next up, we've got an attack precision guns, deal one damage. There's two of these in the deck. And finally, we have self-sacrifice. There's three of these in the deck. It's an attack card. Deal one damage. You may immediately place one of your crew's faction or personality abilities on cooldown. If you choose to do this, this card instead deals two damage. Next up, we've got the Greaser Tub. Now, this has a starting hand size of two cards, and you add an additional card for every two ship systems in play. Also, it has the repair ability. Once a trip, immediately repair one of your currently damaged hull, either structure or armor. It also has three crew uh, slots here and two hull or two structure for the hull and three armor. All right, and first up is System Maintenance is a tech card. There's two of these in the deck. Place this card on an action deck card you currently have in play. When that card is discarded, instead place it on top of your deck. Here we have Rapid Repair. This is a tech card. There's two of them in the deck. Immediately repair one of your currently damaged hull upgrades. Next up, we've got an attack card called Shield Splitter. Choose deal one damage or deal one damage to each of your target's currently undamaged armor. Cannon Blast, deal one damage. Plain and simple, that's an attack card obviously and there's two of those in the deck. And finally, we've got Deflection, it's a maneuver card. Place one cube on this card for each of your currently undamaged armor upgrades. When taking damage, you may immediately remove any quantity of cubes to reduce the incoming damage by one per cube removed in this manner. All right, here we've got the Rogue Spitfire. Starting hand size is two, and you add an additional card for every two ship systems. And then its ability is Smooth Moves. Once it trip, immediately evade two attacks. It's only got room for two crew members and three total arm, or three total hull upgrades, two structure, one armor. But I think you'll see there's a lot of maneuver in this deck to make up for those. First up, we have a maneuver card called Tricky Flying, Evade, one attack, there's three of these in the deck. Here we've got Loop de Loop, a maneuver card, there's two of these in the deck, select an enemy currently targeting you, that enemy's first attack hits itself rather than you. This maneuver card, Escape Artist, there's two of these in the deck, escape this battle immediately, take no damage this phase. And the only attack card in the deck, there's three of them total in the deck, Armed Acrobat, deal one damage. If you play no maneuvers this phase, this card instead deals two direct damage. All right, next let's go through the, all the system upgrades in the game. Then we're gonna go through the bronze upgrades first. There's four of each of these bronze upgrades. This is a tech upgrade called Modular Hull. Immediately repair one of your currently damaged hull upgrades. Here we've got Wind Rider, which is a maneuver upgrade. Evade one attack and draw one card. This is the Match Lock Repeater. Deal one damage. You may play one additional attack card this phase, and this is an attack upgrade, obviously. Here we've got the Wildfire Cannon, an attack upgrade. Deal one direct damage. And finally, the Sprocket Rocket. That's an attack upgrade, deal one damage. You may play one additional tech card this phase. Next up, we've got the silver upgrades. Here's a tech upgrade called the Magnetic Grapple. Now, each of these upgrades have three that come with the game. Place this card on the ship you are targeting for the rest of the battle. This ship may not evade any attacks. If this ship is destroyed, gain five scrap and discard this card. Here we've got Tactical Assessment, another tech upgrade, draw three cards. Steam Albatross, a maneuver upgrade, evade one attack and draw one card. You may play this card immediately. Inferno Lance, deal one damage, this is an attack upgrade, deal one damage. If this attack is not evaded, kill one crew member on the targeted enemy ship and roll for additional damage. And then one to two, no change. Three to four, one additional damage. Five to six, two additional damage. And here we've got the burst cannon, an attack upgrade, deal three damage. 
Next up, we've got the gold upgrades. There's two of each of these. This is a tech upgrade, increased effectiveness. Play this on one of your cards already in play. If it is an attack, that attack deals one damage and the entire damage of that card deals direct damage. If it is a maneuver, that card evades one additional attack. If it is a tech card, draw one card. You may play that card immediately. Personal Augmentation, another tech upgrade. Target one of your crew members. Play this card as if it were either the target crew's faction or personality ability. Photon Array, another tech upgrade. After all player actions, roll one die for each ship targeting you. If the die result is odd, that specific ship's abilities do not affect your ship in any way this phase. A maneuver ability called Twin Eagle, target one ship, evade all incoming damage from the targeted ship. And an attack upgrade called Breach Shells, deal two damage. Deal an additional one damage for each other attack card you play this phase, not including this card. And finally, the Epic System Upgrades. This is a tech upgrade difference engine. Do all of the following. Deal two damage, evade two attacks, draw two cards. You may play these cards immediately. Steam Sam. Place this card on your ship. For the remainder of the battle, you may repair two of your currently damaged hull upgrades during each regroup phase. Draco Turnburner. Target one ship. All damage that ship would deal to you this phase is instead dealt as direct damage to itself that's obviously a maneuver ability here's another uh, or this is an attack ability face melter deal two damage all other attacks you play this phase deal plus two damage each and phalanx barrage another attack deal two damage reduce incoming damage by one for each card you play this phase including this one all right, now let's take a look at the faction abilities. There's five different factions in the game. This is the Greaser faction ability. Repair one of your currently damaged armor. That's once a day. Here we've got the Imperials. Draw one card, play plus one tech. This phase uh, once a trip. Merchant, plus one to one action deck roll or standard reward roll once a day. And then for the rogue, wants a trip, draw one card, play plus one maneuver this phase. And finally the bandit, wants a trip, draw one card, play plus one attack this phase. All right, next up we're gonna go through the companion cards and the personality cards, and I apologize for that fan reflection, but unfortunately if I don't have that running, I will be sweating all over these cards in this room. So. We're just going to have to deal with that, I'm afraid. Here we've got Reynold, who is a companion. Your ship has no trade limits for the remainder of the day. You can use this ability once a day. Here we've got Ransom. Change your target to a new ship once a day. And Jasmine. Place this crew's faction ability off cooldown once a trip. And Tavis, bring the crew's main, bring this crew's main personality off cooldown once a trip. And what that means, the companion is attached to crew members, and so he would be helping that particular crew member come off cooldown. And also notice on the back, it has again Tavis, but then it tells you, it reminds you when this ability is going to come off cooldown. So restore this ability upon returning to the resupply because this is a once a trip. Whereas, let's see if we had, yeah, right here we've got once a day for Ransom. Restore this ability at the start of each day. So a nice little reminder there on the back. Now let's take a look at the companions. Here we've got Steve the Eccentric. When Steve would suffer death, his faction ability is instead placed off cooldown. And by the way, you'll notice here there's a few of these where the wording has rubbed off slightly. That isn't something that's happened since I got the card. That's how it came. I have not had any actual damage done to the card since I got them. So hopefully this is just a printing error and not something that occurs, you know, through wear and tear. But we'll see that in, in you know, as I go along playing this game in the future. Here we've got JT, hire plus one crew on this ship while JT is aboard. Place that crew beside your ship. Cluck, 
Choose one card from your action deck, shuffle the deck, then place that card on top once a trip. Sebastian T. Keeler, immediately add or subtract one from one of your dice rolls once a trip. Asher Reed, select an attack you currently have in play. That attack deals plus one damage once a day. Jessica Bach, place one of your other crew personality abilities off cooldown once a day. August Von Haus, once a region, set aside one card from your hand. When drawing an action deck card, you may instead draw that card. Dasmodius the Elder, before rolling, pick a number. If this number is rolled, it is instead a six once a day. Lady Ed Edwina Ed Lady Edwina Fielding will say, I believe that's how you pronounce it. When you would draw a random system, you may instead choose, you may choose instead once a trip. Alexander Puck Romanov, immediately reroll any one die once a trip. Falmain, immediately reroll one enemy ability die once a day. Rafael Gravata, immediately deal 2 damage to any ship. Roll if less than 6, this crew dies once a day. This is, I think this might be my favorite artwork for the personality cards. Doris Fenner, change a single reaction requirement amount to 1 once a day. Ulysses Stormheart, once per region. Before drawing one enemy ship, immediately activate this to instead draw a commander. Zane David, target one ship. Disable all crew on that ship this phase once per trip. Limit uh, once one use per battle. So I guess that's saying that, I guess that one use per battle, I'm assuming, because obviously if it's once a trip, normally it will be once a battle, but there's some cards that take crew off of cooldown. Maybe it's saying you still can't, reuse that ability during the battle. I'll have to, there's a pretty lengthy FAQ or a pretty in-depth FAQ that I'll have to take a look at as far as his ability goes. Scarlet Sky, target any ship with one of your attacks once per day. Shayla Mason, select one base action deck card you have in play. This acts the same as that card once per trip. Aaliyah Tyndall, target one ship, redirect that ship's first attack to the ship of your choice as direct damage. Ragnar Thorman, select one attack in play, this attack deals direct damage once per trip. Ellie Irons, target one ship, that ship may not deal critical damage to you this phase. Annabelle Holtstein, draw one card for each ship currently targeting you once per trip. Adeline Marie, add one to your base hand size for the remainder of the day once per trip. Limit one use per day. Fiona Dunn, play one additional card of any type once per day. Dionysus Gadot, we'll say. Target one ship. Reduce the this ship's damage output by the amount of damage you deal to them. Professor K.K. Fisher. Save one of your crew from death once per trip. Olivia Pinkerton. Draw a crew personality. You may immediately hire this crew at full price from any faction. Cassidius, yeah, Cassidius. Immediately kill one crew member of on any ship once per day. Brandon Potter, restore two hull on any ship once per trip. Joshua James, place one of your crew faction or personality abilities off cooldown once per trip. 
Mr. B, deal one damage for each of your crew members. This is an attack once per trip. Riley Norikus, pay five scrap to, re to place your ship power off cooldown once per trip. Matthias Duncan, immediately repair one of your currently damaged hull upgrades once per day. Lord William Towers, choose one of your upgrade slots and use it for any upgrade type while Towers is on your ship. This ability cannot be placed on cooldown. Ace Megan, evade one incoming attack once per day. Blotty, choose a number on an action deck you currently have in play and add one once per trip. And finally, Agent Jess Master, target one ship, reduce this ship's damage output by the amount of damage you deal to them. All right, now let's take a quick look at the enemy commanders. A lot of this, you know, you can kind of read on your own down here, but the main thing that you need to really worry about is, so with Luther here, he's going to draw zero extra enemy ships to help fight. Uh, a lot of these commanders you'll see draw additional enemy ships that are kind of like their fleets, but he comes into battle with only the ship that he's piloting. And then, depending on what he rolls, one damage, two damage, evade one attack, evade one attack, one damage to all player ships or destroy all armor. Then we've got Jax with, uh, he's going to bring one enemy ship into battle with him. One damage, kill your last crew, evade one attack, or one damage. Tobias, draw plus one enemy ship. One damage, evade one attack. One damage, evade one attack, and one damage. Grimshaw, plus one enemy ship. One damage, evade one attack, or two damage and two evades. Alexander, draw plus one enemy ship, two damage, one damage, one direct damage, and that's pretty much it. Vladimir, draw plus one enemy ship, one damage, draw one enemy ship following this phase, so he could potentially just continuously bring in support, which could be devastating, and then, but then the trade-off is, if he rolls a six, nothing happens. Synthetic Sam, draw plus one enemy ship, evade one attack, one damage, and that's it. Brutus, draw two enemy ships, one damage, or evade one attack, and then five and six, nothing happens. Fazzini, draw plus two enemy ships, one damage, one direct damage, evade one attack, receive minus one damage, steal five scrap, and then one damage and one evade. And then finally Stock, who is a huge pain in the butt to fight. This guy destroyed me one time. Draw plus three enemy ships, one damage. All non-player attacks plus one damage. All non-player ships evade one attack, and then one damage again. All right, next we're gonna look at the Warlords. Right, this is, so this first guy is Mitchell O. Hair. He's gonna have zero ability cards, but four wave cards and plus one ship per wave. Uh, Commodore von Grothhausen, one ability card and three wave cards. He also has four health. And by the way, Mitchell O'Hare only has one health or one whole, I, I suppose. Two ability cards for Eris, one wave card. Also, Warlord attacks deal direct damage. And then you can see he has a ton of health. He has 10 total. Here we've got Samson, three ability cards and one wave card and eight health. Charleston, six, abil or six health, two ability cards, two wave cards. And RR Hackworth, six health, two ability cards, one wave card, plus one crew to enemy ships. All right, so here we've got the Warlord ability cards. This first one is Agile Aggression. You see uh, one damage, two damage, evade one attack, or evade two attacks. Corbus Cannon, one damage straight down, except six is nothing. Disrupting Blast, reduce all hand sizes by one, 
and then one damage or two damage or evade one attack and then also possibly nothing. Firestorm, one damage, kill one crew, evade one attack, and possibly nothing. Reinforcements, draw one enemy ship per player, one damage, evade one attack, and possibly nothing. Old Thunder, draw one enemy ship per player, one damage, one crew power on cooldown, um, and then possibly nothing. So those last cards we looked at were the Warlord abilities. These are the Warlord wave cards. Here we've got Advanced Arsenal, draw one ship per player, draw one additional Warlord ability, card, discard this ability after this wave. And then we've got Foul Villainy, draw one enemy ship, add one enemy commander per player. This commander brings no additional enemy ships. And Hasty Reinforcements, draw two enemy ships per player, all enemy ships have no armor. Outnumbered, draw one enemy ship per player, add one wave card. Radial Concussion, each player adds one enemy ship and rolls. One to two, place your ship ability on cooldown. Three to four, lose one crew member. Five to six, draw one less card this wave. Unknown Odds, roll once per player, add one enemy ship or add two enemy ships or five to six, add one enemy commander. This ship brings no additional ships. So let's take a look at the enemy ships that we keep talking about. Here we've got the Festering Pile. It is a bandit condor class. It could have up to four hull. You can see these numbers. That's based on what tier region you're in. Tier one, he's only gonna have one health. Tier two, he'll be up to three and tier four, or I'm sorry, tier two be up to three and tier three be up to four. And then down here next to the crew, you also see how many crew he'll have based on the tier region he's in. And then his abilities are one damage or nothing. The Black Rook could have all the way up to six, including armor, three crew, one damage, or receive minus one damage, or restore one armor. Garu Kalar, four for the hull, three for the crew, one damage, or evade one attack, or nothing. Shash Gao is a Legion Defiler class. Four for the hull, two for the crew. One damage, evade one attack, or nothing. Miz, Miz Behavior, Bandit Condor class. Four for the hull, two for the crew. One damage, or nothing. Belay Mac, four for the hull, two for the crew. One damage, evade one attack, or nothing. Cadence Corruption, four for the hull, two for the crew, two damage, one damage, evade one attack, or nothing. Grumpiest Prime, five for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, receive minus one damage, restore one armor, or nothing. The Vulture, five, uh, hull, five for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, receive minus one damage, restore one armor, or nothing. The Fox, four for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, receive minus one damage or nothing. Jutana, four for the hull, two for the crew, one damage or nothing. Ever Eagle, three for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, evade one attack or nothing. The Executioner, four for the hull, one for the crew, two damage for one, a roll of one, two, or three, or nothing for four, five, and six. Gre or excuse me, Donnie Brook, five for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, receive minus one damage, or nothing. The Octo, Octodicillion, sure, we'll go with that. Five for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, you paid one attack, one damage and roll again, or nothing. The, Delphi the Delphinus, four for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, evade one attack or nothing. Cat's Claw, four for the hull, two for the crew, one damage, evade one attack or nothing. Iron Lizzie, five for the hull, three for the crew, one damage, restore one armor, receive minus one damage or nothing. 
the disturbance four hold two crew one damage two damage or nothing lucky seven three hold two crew evade one attack one damage or nothing Torres Shea, Fork Hull, two crew, one damage, evade one attack, or nothing. And finally, let's take a look at the different regions you'll find yourself going into throughout the game. Here, we've got Mc, McPickle's Reach, which uh, the ability there for that region, each player's first crew hire in this region costs 10 scrap. Dixon's Haven, upon entering this region, each player may trade any one weapon for one armor upgrade. Potter's Haze. Instead of choosing skirmish or scavenge on normal exploration days, you must roll even draw a skirmish card, odd draw a scavenge card. Sinwell Seize. Place one cube on this card for each player. Before rolling, any player may remove one cube from this card to instead roll two dice. Choose one of the rolled dice as your result, or yeah, as your roll. Port Matney. While in this region, you may bet up to five scrap on any dice roll. Before rolling, guess a number one to six. If correct, gain the amount you wagered. If incorrect, lose that amount. Boneyard Shallows. All scrap rolls give an additional two scrap. Skatara Hunting Grounds. All enemy ships of the Legion faction gain one additional crew member. Layla's Mechanical Depot. Upon entering this region, each player may pay five scrap to select one ship system. Remove it and draw a random system that costs up to 10 scrap more. Royal Dominion. The number of enemy ships a commander brings to the battle is reduced by one. Charlatan Sanctuary. While in this region, no player may choose to draw a scavenge card when exploring. The Morley Effect. Select one crew member, place both their faction and personality abilities on cooldown. City of Floatsum. Each player's first purchase each day is reduced by five scrap. So there you go. That's our card close up for Zephyr Winds of Change. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please consider subscribing to it and also go over and follow me on Twitter if you'd like, at Board Offline. And until next time, if you're bored online, Board Offline. <laughs>